I will speak about the problem of causality. Why such a subject? Uh, I think that it is crucial for both philosophy and theology to explore this dimension in order to assess issues like personal freedom, role of rationalists, in general, and not a reductionist view of the relation of mind body. So it is very important. I would like to explore this problem by dealing with both the Catholic philosophical tradition and contemporary science. My remote goal is to show how dangerous and even ideological is to put these approaches against each other. So, very shortly, what, what Aristotle tells about causes, this is very known, Aristotle, Aristotle distinguishes among uh, four kinds of causes. Uh, I don't uh, like to, 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 to repeat all this stuff. I will focus on, on formal causes in particular and uh, try to explain in modern language what are formal causes. In fact, uh, according to me, uh, formal causes are restrictions of the space of possibilities. That is, when you have uh, some, uh, some, some formal causes, uh, this means that uh, it accepts uh, such a cause, accepts uh, constraints on a certain uh, physical or chemical or mental or whatever situation. So I will interpret formal causes in terms of constraints. For instance, let, let us make a very, very uh, simple example uh, coming from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from, from our environment. If you take the disposition of the trees in the forest, this disposition may appear like something that is only perceived by us and there is no uh, ontological substrate. At the opposite, when you have a physical agent like wind, for instance, or fire, uh, the disposition of the trees will probably likely canalize the, these agents or even block them. You know that the certain disposition of trees is equal to block one, uh, wind or blocking a fire. So, it, it, is, it is important. It, it sets a constraint. What is a constraint? Is the fact that a constraint is the fact that you have certain possible outcomes and not others. This is what it, this sense it is a reduction of the space of possibilities. Uh, now, uh, the problem of uh, I will touch now a very important issue that is the problem of control in organisms or if you like in biological systems. Uh, in fact, the mind cannot be separated from body, although obviously it cannot be reduced to it either. Uh, biological systems are also cognitive systems because they need to catch environmental information. Without that, organisms cannot survive. So, uh, what is important to understand here is that a theorem of cybernetics tells us that in order to have a model of the environment, you need to accept control. Without control, you will have no model of the environment. So the two issues here, control and having a kind of representation of the environment, can't be separated. And in fact, the control is ubiquitous in biology. There, there, there does not exist a single population in our organism or, organism, or even in our cells, that is not under control. For instance, uh, the whole issue that starts with DNA and arrives to the, the building we're building, every step is controlled. And when there are errors, for instance, in general, the cell what does not does move in many situations is to erase the information that starts again, is one of the possibilities. So control is really ambiguous. If you take a re recent uh, a, a textbooks on biology, you will see that it's likely the most used word in biology today. So control is important. Now we come to this issue. Uh, controls cannot be accepted without top-down position. It is impossible. This is my main thesis. So in order to have control, you need top-down position. Uh, uh, why? Because the system that controls cannot depend on the system to be controlled. And in order to control another system, you need to evaluate the different options for selecting the right ones. For instance, this sequence in, of, of information is right, that one, no. So I will erase it as, as, as from DNA to protein, in the example that I did, uh, did before. So top-down position is crucial for, for, for the understanding of this issue. Now, uh, the mystery of top-down position is the following. Uh, it, it appears that it is impossible to violate uh, the, the closure of, of physical and chemical rules. So you cannot have a system, for instance the mind, or even biological functions, that can violate the laws of chemistry or of physics. So this is a real problem, because uh, how can we understand a top-down effect if you cannot violate what happens 
it, it will decrease some people's rule. So how can, how can uh, top-down effect arise at all and be effective in such a situation? And this is the real problem that we have. So uh, the solution that I will offer here, uh, and uh, I am working on it since six years, uh, is the following. A top-down position would work if we, are, if we have both formal constraints from above and dynamics from below. So dynamics from below and, and top effect from below together, but top effects in terms of constraints, generate top-down position. Um, how can we understand that? Um, because formal constraints uh, are a kind of a potentiality. They are potential. Are potential resources that need to be activated. And uh, you need to, be act to activate them through dynamical processes. And this was precisely also Aristotle's point of view, because Aristotle said, as you may well know, that there is no, uh, uh, no uh, transition from uh, potentiality to actuality without some dynamical effect of some kind. So you need dynamical effects. Now, the crucial point to understand is that such a dynamism cannot come from above. This is impossible. Because uh, if uh, we have uh, uh, formal constraints from above, formal constraints are formal. They are not a dynamism. So they are a kind of structure that is in itself uh, inert or dormant. You need exactly dynamical processes in order to activate it. Like the disposition of trees in the forest. The disposition of trees in the forest is inactive, it's dormant. If you don't have fire or wind, you will never perceive the fact that this is a structure able potentially to have certain effects. So this is clear. So um, uh, what is the reason of this difference? The reason is the following. This is a problem that was explored by Aristotle himself and by this great American philosopher Charles Peirce. He, he worked a lot on this point. And what is the following? Uh, mechanical causes of the physical and chemical kind, mechanical causes are reduced relative to the antecedents. That is, when I, for instance, when I shoot with a gun, I shot, a, a small deviation of the trajectory will have totally another effect. And the opposite, formal constraints, but also, if you like, theological causes of which I will come later on, uh, formal causes are reduced relative to the consequences, not to the, to the, to the, antecedents, to the antecedents, to the consequences. In fact, any selection and control starts necessarily with some goal. This is, this is necessary. Uh, so, goals are not necessarily intentional here, because I am trying to cover, to cover uh, issues that go from biology up to mind, the mental processes. So they don't need to be uh, necessarily intentional. But uh, this problem joins formal causes and theological ones. Theological ones. It, it is in the sense that uh, when, whenever uh, you need to accept control, you need some kind of, of, of goal or purpose. And when you have that, when you have that, you are able to make use of the spontaneous processes that arise in the physical chemical world and to use them as a kind of uh, kind of, 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 of activating signals in order in order to have the the, the, the formal constraints playing the right role. Uh, I, I will do a very very simple example. Uh, if you think a, 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 a the most easy organism on, uh, on earth that is a bacteria. A bacterium is an incredible complex chemical system relative to any uh, non-biotic non -biotic, uh, chemical system. In fact, a bacterium has uh, about 1,000 chemical reactions that happen simultaneously. But uh, the problem is that if you take the whole chemical machinery that is in a bacterium, the possibility to have a chemical interaction is huge, is many orders higher than the chemical reactions of the body. So this is a huge selection activated by the in itself. Uh, another example, uh, the number of proteins in, in our organism is re relatively low, it's high, okay, but it's relatively low because it is about, uh, an estimate is, is about, uh, I would say, 10, 10 million or something like that. 
But the problem is that the possible properties that could be produced is a huge number. That this is, is 10 to 390. If you think about the fact that the whole number of particles of our universe is 10 to 87, this will give you an idea of the complexity that we have here. So, this is the role of formal constraints. That is the fact that they limit, they, they, they select the space of possibilities, they reduce the space of, the space of possibilities, and in that way allows for arising for functions and allow for the fact that, that, that chemical or physical processes may be used in completely different contexts in order to implement functions, in order to implement decisions, in order to implement controls, and so on. So I think this is a way to understand the top-down position that is uh, in accordance with both uh, our philosophical tradition, because I think that Aristotle did not say something completely different under this aspect, and with what the science of today tells us. I thank you for your question. Thank you. Thank you very much.